So we're gonna get right into this. Today we're going over how to update the firmware on your 5100. This also is pretty much the same process on a 5300. So we're gonna get right into it. Uh, here you can see this is what the radios look like. This is their uh, data sheet um, that talks about what they're all capable of. These are the different models. You have model one here, no screen, no keypad. A model two, just like the uh, the XTS line radios, these are basically the generational competitor to the um, Motorola XTS radios, and in my opinion, uh, better in uh, several ways. Uh, this is model two, and then full keypad over here, model three. I think EF Johnson calls them something slightly different than that, but it's easier for me to remember that just because of my dealings with Motorola. So those are the the mo the, uh, the portables or the handhelds uh, right here. Um, here you can see a, this is actually one of the older versions of the 5300 uh, mobile rig. They made several different ones of these, VHF, UHF, 800 megahertz. Um, I believe this is the SL line where you see this flat face with the two knobs. Uh, they started making in a, in also in an ES line. Um, I would recommend sticking with the ES line radios as far as it comes with the um, EF Johnson's as the older generation SL line radios. Did have a few issues um, but were fixed as they uh, upgraded up to the ES line with several improvements, including uh, AMBE um, plus two vocoder um, for the digital, for the P25 digital operation, which is a very crisp, natural sounding, probably the best digital voice I've ever heard. I have no experience with Next Edge or anything like that, but over as far as comparing uh, DMR and uh, the, the P25 IMBE vocoders, like in the XTS 5000s, the AMBE vocoders in the EF Johnson's is very crisp, very clear, great noise canceling, um, amazing audio quality. The Motorola's are really good, but the EF Johnson's uh, definitely upped them on that. So um, I've had a lot of people asking me recently uh, where to get the software for these radios, and anyone who's already asked me this, um, I've pointed you right here in this direction. The software is very available. Um, at this website right here, uh, let me see if I just go to his homepage, really. It's the whiskey9charlieromeo.net, or if you just type in whiskey9charlieromeo on Google, it's like the first thing that pops up. It says wiki, and you'll come into here, and he has a bunch of different radio and electronics information. Um, XTL radios, uh, XTL 2500s, 5000s, XTS 2500s, notes on programming, um, for the 900 megahertz band, which I had somebody asking me about this earlier, and I just noticed this, um, not earlier, a couple days ago, but I might have to send him this link if I can find him in my DMs, which are totally um, buried and blowing up, especially today. But, <clears throat> so, to get to the EF Johnson software, you're going to go right here to EF Johnson, and there's a ton of software available. Also, Almost all of your manuals, uh, parts catalog, price lists from like the early 2000s from the radios were um, like the new thing. Uh, the data sheet for fire for the EF uh, Johnson fire radios, service bulletins, all of the manuals. PC configure programming manual is available. The PC configure um, two programming or three programming manuals. Uh, several um, versions of the software programming and tuner. This is where you're going to get your PC configure. I'm using the newest one right here uh, for my general programming is 2.18.06. Uh, you will need PC Tune. This is the same thing as the Astro Tune, um, Astro Tuner. And then updating the firmware on these things, which what we're getting into in just a minute is so much easier than on the XTS radios, guys. It is amazingly easy. You can come right in here. You have all of your 5100 series um, uh firmwares right here, and they're just express updaters. It's super simple. So for a 5100 ES, you're going to want to look at the uh, the version 6 um, ver uh, firmware packages. The version 4, I believe, are going to be for your SL radio lines, which is going to be the older generation ones. And you can tell the difference between the two generations primarily by... Um, actually, I'll go right up here and show you guys. I think it's... Um, which one is it? Which one is it? Is it this one? Nope. Wrong one, sorry. Mm, catalog, this is it. Let me scroll all the way down here. And give me one second, everybody. I have to edit this out. But 
got all your pricing here. This is the older stuff in this catalog. And you'll see these are the SL line radios. You see how the up and down button is one button. Also, the keypads look much different with the function buttons. There's only two function buttons. Or there are still four function buttons, but they're in different places. The side buttons look totally different as if you come over to these radios here. These are the newer uh, version 6 boards. Um, there might, nope, there's no other pictures, but the side buttons are different. Mainly you could tell by this whole front keypad layout here. So that's the main difference. Let's go back to, oh uh, shit, which one was it? It's this one. Let's go back to here. So to update the firmware, I've been told to run this firmware on my radios, um, which is the one I am currently running on my radios, I believe. Or no, hold on, stand by. Actually, I believe I'm running this, but we're going to update to this. I'm just going to download this real quick. Perfect. Open this up. I guess it opened in the background or is it loading? I'm hoping this works for me. I've had some uh, problems running EF Johnson software. Oh, shit. Oh, it just actually opened up the whole program. Perfect. So it actually doesn't have to like install anything uh, or it does like a background install. I don't know exactly how that works, but you'll get to this screen right here for your express updater. And from this point, it's going to be a lot like doing the Motorola's except for a lot more easy. I'm going to go ahead and put my radio in bootloader mode is the same protocol on an XTS 5000. You're going to hold the first button above the PTT on the side of the radio, which has a dot on it. You have a dot and a dash. You're going to hold the, hold down the one with a dot, hold down the emergency button on the top of the radio, and you're going to turn the radio on, hold those buttons for maybe two or three seconds. And when you look at the screen, it should say bootload waiting for serial bus command. From there, I'm going to plug the radio into the programming cable, and then I'm going to pr plug the programming cable into the computer might have to restart it. Nope. Okay. And then now it's just a process of figuring out which COM port it's in. I'm 99% sure it's COM port 7. And we're going to hit start. It's going to ask you for a password here. And I believe it says it's behind it. PC will require a password. Tune, the updater, everything. It's behind there, but it's HUSKERS in all caps. H-U-S-K-E-R-S. -E you press OK. Now, this process will take several minutes if you got it right. Word case, H-U-S-K-E-R-S. -E and this is actually going fairly quickly. The radio says bootload downloading RAM resident image. So uh, if I have to, I might edit some of that out as I had some slight difficult uh, technical difficulties back there. It was COM port 9. I didn't notice that that was highlighted. Um, before and not grayed out. Now starts the long process, so I'll come back when this is done, everybody. The radio says update flash programming sector one. I believe, if I'm correct, I think there's 16 sectors, but I could be wrong. I'm gonna let this run and I'll be right back. All right, and there you have it. It is done, successful. A little bit of technical difficulties there, figuring out the COM port, and I also uh, I typed in the password all lowercase, Huskers lowercase. I think I said that before, not uppercase. And the radio looks all good. And I'm pretty sure I just updated it to, because uh, I just checked the other radio, and it's running the same firmware package, so I basically didn't do anything to the radio. I just <laughs> reflashed it with the same firmware that was already on it. So as you can see, the process was much simpler than uh, doing it on the Motorola's without the other... Everything that goes into using Astro Depot and that whole rabbit hole that that program is, um, it's this is just the Express Updater. You download this, you open this, you and you run it, and you're good to go. Uh, there is a page two, or it's just an extension over here, file version target. Okay, you can retrieve all this information from the radio before um, loading it, but uh, it looks like everything went just fine. So we can close out of this, and we can close out of here, and... Uh, Hopefully you guys like the new background on the computer. Got that made up recently. Pretty stoked on it. Um, but yeah, this is going to be the start of a series doing the EF Johnsons. I plan on uh, 
also doing uh, probably the next video will be the updating the feature set on these radios with a uh, with a probably probably a pre-programmed or a pre-edited uh, feature set file that you load using the PC issue. Like I said, PC issue is like the depot equivalent for these radios to add and take away radio features. So basically like adding uh, the different encryption algorithms, um, your channel availability, whether you have a 128 channel radio or like I just go ahead and I, I put it to the 512 channel talk groups, I believe is what it is. Um, so yeah, that's coming up next. Hopefully this helps you guys uh, much easier than the Motorola's. So far, I'm really liking the EF Johnson's. I've recently picked up some uh, VP600 and VP400 radios as well. I'm getting a programming cable built for those because they are also not commercially available. Um, so you got to figure that out. Uh, there is some uh, workarounds there, but uh, I'll be making some videos on those once I get uh, behind the scenes on the VP radios as well. So uh, stay tuned, everybody, and have a good one.